I would like to draw three main conclusions. Number one, the Earth is warmer in 1988 than at any time in the history of instrumental measurements. Number two, the global warming is now large enough that we can ascribe with a high degree of confidence a cause and effect relationship to the greenhouse effect. And number three, our computer climate simulations indicate that the greenhouse effect is already large enough to begin to affect the probability of extreme events such as summer heat waves. You know, you have to say this is as much political theater as scientific evidence. It was Hansen himself that suggested he give his evidence at the end of June, figuring that the weather would be hot. He wasn't disappointed. They were in the middle of a heat wave, so people were in the mood to write about global warming. He'd also checked that the press were going to be there that day and that he was the first person giving testimony. This man wanted to make news, and he saved the best to last. Altogether, this evidence represents a very strong case, in my opinion, that the greenhouse effect has been detected and it is changing our climate now. It was pretty explosive stuff. Essentially what Hansen was saying is that global warming was no longer a prediction, it was now an observation. For the first time, a leading scientist had stepped off the fence and told the world global warming had arrived. of us must begin to face up with the fact that if we continue emitting vast quantities of the greenhouse gases, we're going to face a global temperature rise larger than anything experienced in human history. Hansen succeeded. Thanks to him, global warming became an overnight sensation. The time for action to respond to the impending warming is now. Hansen later admitted that he'd weighed up the risk of being wrong against the costs of saying nothing and decided that he had to speak out. This evidence represents a very strong case. Most scientists would rather not make a definitive statement, but the public doesn't always understand that. I mean, if you say on the one hand this and on the other hand that, it makes the public think, well, we don't know enough to draw a conclusion. And that, that can be uh, unhelpful in terms of when you do need to have policy uh, changes. Basically, Hansen stuck his neck out. Not something that we scientists are famous for. I don't think I'd have been enough to do it. But perhaps fortune favors the brave because Hansen's testimony has stood the test of time pretty well. Within a few months of Hansen's evidence, the United Nations had helped set up an international committee to examine global warming, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. And politicians jumped on board too. Margaret Thatcher became the first world leader to warn about the dangers of global warming. The danger of global warming is as yet unseen but real enough for us to make changes and sacrifices so that we do not live at the expense of future generations. That prospect is a new factor in human affairs. It's comparable in its implications to the discovery of how to split the atom. Indeed, its results could be even more far-reaching. No generation has a freehold on this earth. All we have is a life tenancy with a full repairing lease. By the early 1990s, it looked like the scientific battle was pretty well over. The idea that a new ice age was on the way had been comprehensively overturned. Scientists and politicians agreed that humans were altering the climate. And something had to be done about it. Global warming had well and truly arrived. And then along came the most familiar of plot twists, the backlash. And what a backlash it was. In the 1990s, global warming was to become the biggest scientific controversy of my lifetime. In a way, Jim Hansen had been too successful. His high-profile testimony galvanized all those who, for whatever reason, 
disagreed with taking action to prevent climate change. It's simply, this is not what happened. It's just not true. It was the beginning of an organised fight back, driven by a band of maverick scientists. Global warming is not a crisis. Supported by powerful businesses and politicians. And they would subject the whole idea of global warming to a new and searching critique. Next time, the skeptics fight back. How a scientific consensus turned into a vicious battleground. And how science itself was ultimately the winner.